from KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NOCO. I'm Erin O'Toole. More law enforcement officers in Colorado are using artificial intelligence to create police reports. Boulder Police launched a pilot program earlier this year, allowing artificial intelligence to help officers generate reports related to minor crimes. A few months later, they expanded the policy to let AI help write police reports for all types of cases. That's according to a story from Boulder Reporting Lab. Boulder officers use a new technology called Draft One. Fort Collins police have also been using Draft One since April. So how reliable is this technology? And will the police reports it generates hold up in court? To help answer those questions, we spoke with Melissa Inglis, Associate Professor of Criminal Justice at the University of Oklahoma. She studies how law enforcement uses artificial intelligence programs like Draft One. Draft One is unique because it takes police body cam audio and video footage and it puts that into text format into the specific police department's report writing format. Now, there are a few different areas that need to be filled out on any police report, such as the case number, uh, the code violation, the date and time of day. The narrative portion of a report is the description of what happened. Why is drafting the narrative portion of a police report helpful to an officer? So they do spend a lot of time just writing those reports, filling in the details, that's going to allow them to spend less time on writing those reports and more time on just filling out kind of the human elements of that report Mm -hmm. and putting in the details from each incident. But there's also other benefits, and that's really the improved accuracy of those reports, the improved technical writing, but that's also a more readable document for people like prosecutors, judges, uh, even those outside of the criminal justice field. Okay. It sounds like it can catch details that perhaps the officer has um, forgotten about or missed when they're doing the writing. Yeah, it almost serves as a safeguard because the other specific thing about draft one that is unique is that it requires police officers to sign off on it, essentially, to say that they have reviewed the document. So they can't just, you know, have AI work up a document and then submit that for prosecution. They actually have to look at this document and say that they are acknowledging that it's by AI and they are taking full responsibility for that, essentially. Melissa, I have to say I would feel more comfortable with artificial intelligence writing details around someone's jaywalking ticket rather than the report for someone arrested on suspicion of a more serious crime like assault. Do you think draft one is as trustworthy on more serious crimes? I do. On those very serious cases, officers are still going to be going through the process of going through, making sure that they approve of all the documents. And then, of course, that report then goes to, say, a detective who's going to further investigate those more serious cases. So part of the reason these front range police departments want to use this AI technology is to save officers time on filling out paperwork. You mentioned that's kind of a benefit that's touted. That way they say they can spend more time being proactive in their communities. Now, Axon, the developer of Draft One, has claimed that it can cut 30 minutes to an hour of paperwork a day for officers. I'm curious what the data shows on whether Draft One saves officers time. So interestingly, there have been very few, if maybe only one, academic study of draft one so far. But basically, they did a study of 85 officers that generated 755 reports using draft one, and they found that it didn't save time. Hmm. But it's very possible that given some time learning the software, figuring out all the ins and outs of it, that it would save time. It is expected that it would save some time, particularly for supervisors who review those reports. A report may be Uh, horrible. And then a supervisor reviews it and kicks it back to the police officer, says it needs more details. So it could potentially save the entire department time. Say if a prosecutor is looking at that report and says, I can't use this, give me something else. um, Then in that sense, yes, it would save time. Melissa, I know there are concerns from members of 
the police oversight panel in Boulder, that potential bias may develop over time within the technology. Talk a bit about how bias could creep into draft one's reports and what the consequences would be. According to Axon's website, Draft One, even though it uses OpenAI's GPT-4 Turbo uh, technology, mm-hmm. it has been calibrated to prevent any like speculations, embellishments, other types of like fabrications, the type of stuff that you would typically see in AI, because those creative features are turned off. So the the creativity feature in generative AI that kind of like that learns what you want to say, right? And then it tries to predict that that's actually turned off in draft one. I'm a criminal justice professor, definitely not a techie. (laughs) How Axon has developed draft one, it is designed to safeguard against those by only using the facts. Now, how do professionals working in the criminal justice system, not just law enforcement officers, but people like judges, um, prosecutors, defense attorneys, how do they feel about the use of this software? Do they trust that these narratives will stand up in court? It is a very mixed bag. In the studies that I've conducted, frontline officers, people that work in Department of Corrections, even they're outside of policing, uh, judges, prosecutors, investigators, it's a very mixed bag. Some are very open to new technology. They they want to learn more about it. And so far in my experience that whenever officers do start to learn more about it, they become a little more willing to experiment with it because we're talking about a highly specialized software. I have talked to some prosecutors in Oklahoma who think that it's great because it's going to save them time. It can even increase prosecution rates if it includes better information. Uh, it's going to be well-written. A lot of police reports, they don't hold up in court simply because of the lack of detail, because of how it's written. And there's some expectation amongst prosecutors that AI could help with that. Well, we've talked a lot about what Draft One can do to help officers and police departments, but what about civilians? What do the people coming into contact with law enforcement stand to gain or lose from the use of this AI? I think that the benefits to it are similar to those of body cams. It provides another level of protection in a sense, because if all of those things are being documented on the body cam, they're now being documented in text form. Mm -hmm. The other thing about draft one is that it doesn't share that information externally. And so there shouldn't be any privacy or confidentiality issues within that. Melissa Inglis is an associate professor of criminal justice at the University of Oklahoma. She noted that many departments across the country are using artificial intelligence to help write police reports. Some are simply using a service like Grammarly to improve spelling and grammar in departments that still make officers write their own reports. You can find details in our show notes and at KUNC.org. And by the way, we reached out to Axon for details on their technology, but didn't connect with a representative for the company. That's it for us today on In the NoCo. I'm Erin O'Toole. Thank you so much for listening.